Hi, and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson, we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking animated bee using Adobe Photoshop and After Effects. So anyways, guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to generate our images. So I'm just using Adobe Firefly here and for the prompt, I searched for a small cute bee. I tried to get it as smooth as possible, but it wasn't really the case. I just also made sure that the wings were front facing and there were two wings per side and I wanted it in a cartoon style. So I made sure that I chose that. Once you're happy with that, you can download that and then we'll get it ready to take it into Photoshop. The other image that we needed was a background so I didn't really want to use the background from the original B image so I just generated uh, this and so this is a colorful cartoon background with a few small bees in the distance in a sunset field they look more like birds but it's all right so I'm just gonna download that and also take that into Photoshop to remove a few things and just fix it up so here we are in Photoshop and what we need to do is we need to remove the subject from the background. So in order to do that, I'm just going to unlock that background. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to search for the object selection tool. I'm going to make sure that I click on the B and you know what? It's done a pretty good job, but you can see over here that not everything is connected. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over here and grab the lasso tool. I'm going to hold shift until it turns into a plus and then just draw this selection over that area there just so it adds it to everything else. Once I have my whole beat selected, I'm going to press Command Shift J and that will now cut out that beat from the background. So that's looking pretty cool. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to separate the wings from the actual bee. So there's a few ways to do this, but what I'm going to use is the magnetic lasso tool and all you need to do is just follow the path and go around the wing. So I'll speed this up for you guys. Cool. So now once you get to the end, just make sure that you line them up. And then what we need to do is again, the same process. You need to press command shift and J and that will separate that wing from the rest of the body so you can see there's a little bit of stuff that it just left so to fix that up all you can do is just get the rectangular marquee tool and make sure you're on that body layer and you can just delete it just like that and then we'll fix up this area over here in a second so what we're going to do is we're going to select that layer again and we're going to repeat the process again cool so now once we have that you can press Command Shift J and that will cut that out and then we'll just go through and we'll just clean up any of the stuff that kind of appears in there and now what we can do is we can fix up these uh, little edges over here. So in order to do that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the marquee tool and just draw a box around there hit Gen Fill and then click Generate. And cool, so now it's generated some of these, you know, designs. So you want to get the one that has the least hairs in there because otherwise it's just too hard to cut out this bit. And the only reason why that background exists is because the generative fill doesn't work with transparencies just yet, but I'm pretty sure in the future it will. So once I have that, I'm going to do the same for the other side. So I'll just take a section over here, gen fill, then press generate. Cool, so now we have both those items over there and what we are going to do is I'm just going to select all those gen fill layers and my body layer. And I'm just going to merge the layers together and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the magic wand tool and I'm just going to delete this section over here and that section over there. It doesn't have to be super perfect but you get the idea and then we can put our wings back and now we can you know move them around to wherever you like and we can put the body at the top layer so it looks something like that so once you have your body and your two wings then you can save that as a psd document now the next thing that we need to work on is the background so i've just made a 3840 by 2160 new photoshop document and i've just dragged my background into that and I'm just gonna you know shift it around and move it till it's probably somewhere around there 
and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this ready for After Effects. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna remove this tree. So I'm gonna come over here, highlight that, click Gen Fill and then Generate. Cool, so now that's kind of removed the tree and the reason why we want to remove these things is so we can have a clear horizon line so we can animate the sky. So the next thing I want to change is I don't really like that sun. So what I'm going to do is hit Gen Fill and then Generate. Cool, so now that sun is a bit better. And the final tree that I'm going to remove is I'm going to remove that tree. So again, Gen Fill, Generate. Cool, so now we have a clear horizon line. So now what we can do is we can go file export, save that as a JPEG and then take it into After Effects. So here we are in After Effects and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new composition, 1920 by 1080 pixels, uh, 30 FPS at a duration of about 10 to 15 seconds. Let's press OK. Then what we need to do is we need to import our file. So we'll start with the background first. I'm gonna go right click, file import. And once you've imported your background, just drag it to your timeline. So the first thing we need to do is we need to scale it down by 50% because it was a 4K image and we're working on a 1080 composition. And it looks pretty nice, but it doesn't move. So what we need to do is we need to add an effect called corner pin. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the stopwatch for both upper and uh, left and right. And then what I'm gonna do is on this X value for the upper left, I'm gonna go negative 400. All right, and then I'm gonna move to the end of that composition. I'm gonna right click on that, go reset. And then I'm gonna add 400 to the right uh, X value. And so now if you've done that correctly, now you will have that animation going through and that looks pretty cool but everything is moving so what we need to do is we need to duplicate that layer and I'm just going to get rid of the corner pin effect and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rough mask that follows that mountain range just underneath there and just to about there and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to join that mask back up together and so now if you scrub through that, you will see the bottom only moves, but if we hit uh, M on our keyboard for mask, now we can invert that. So now only the top bit moves. So the other thing that I'm gonna add in here, I'm gonna press F for feather, and I'm just gonna bump up that feather just to make it a bit softer. And so now we've got the sky moving and that looks pretty cool. So now what we can do is we can work on the B. So to do that, first we need to import our PSD. And this time we are going to import it as a composition with editable layer styles. And so now we have the B composition over here. So I'm just gonna double click that to open it. There's our B. And I'm just gonna rename this uh, body for now and might as well go and rename these two, so these are wings. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to move the anchor point of these wings. So you can see that this is the right wing, so I want it to move from this point here, and I'm gonna do the same for the left wing, and I'm gonna put it over here as well. So now what we need to do is we need to use an expression. So I'm gonna press R for rotation. I'm gonna hold option, hit that stopwatch. I'm gonna write wiggle and then I'm gonna write maybe 100 comma 50. So now if you've done that correctly, you will see that the wings are flapping up and around. And if you wanna change any of these values, for example, if you wanna lower that down to about 40, you can also do that as well, or you can change the initial value. But I'm pretty happy with that. I just wanna make sure that I move it in a bit just so that you don't see any of that other area. And I think that looks pretty cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on that rotation, go to copy expression only and paste it to the left wing. And again, there we go. It just comes off a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to get the select tool and I'm just gonna move it inside just so you don't see any black areas over there. The other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just going to use a little bit of rough and edges on the body. So if I search for the effect called rough and edges and if I just play around with some of these settings, you can see that it just kind of makes the edges a little bit smoother and you can 
really remove the edge sharpness as well so depending on what you want so i'm going to go with something like that so i think that looks pretty cool now we can go back to our main uh nature you know background comp and what we can do is we can drag our b in there so obviously the b is way too big so i'm just gonna scale him down like that i'm gonna press p for position i'm gonna hold option hit that stopwatch and then i'm gonna write wiggle i'm gonna write 0 0.8 comma let's say 180. so now i've got the b and he's wings are moving and his body is moving around and if you want to change how much he moves you can always play around with these wiggle values the other thing is the wings don't look that great because we haven't applied motion blur on there so if i go back to our b composition you can see that this option over here motion blur will now make the wings look much nicer and so now the wings will be flapping around like that and it looks pretty cool so the other thing that i did here was i just duplicated uh this and i just you know made it really small and i just put another b over here but i also did go back to the position and i held option and i wrote another wiggle expression this time it's 0 0.4 comma 100 just so it's a little bit more random and now i've got two bees flying on our scene just like that so now to finish this off the first thing that i needed to do is i needed to create an adjustment layer and inside the adjustment layer i'm going to look for the effect called lumetri color and then down in creative i'm gonna scrub through until i get to sl gold rush hdr and i'm just going to bring that down to probably about 80 or something like that and that just ties all the the colors together and the other effect that i added on here was just some noise so i added a new adjustment layer and i bumped that up to about eight percent and now i've got that effect as well other things you could do is you could go onto your B and add some curves if you like, you know, to blend it in a little bit better. So for example, I just made it a little bit darker like that, but totally up to you. But anyways, that's how you create an animated B scene using Adobe Photoshop and After Effects. I hope you guys learned something. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.